It's like these two camps are at war with each other. These two groups look at one another with squinty eyes, and all the successinators look at the spiritual crowd, and they're like, yeah, but they're a bunch of losers, and then all the spiritual crowd look at the successinators, and they're, they're, they're miserable because money's the root of all evil. And I've always had friends in both camps, and I've always hung out and enjoy hanging out with both of those cats. What's up guys? I'm super excited for you to see this episode of the Daily Bread Vlog. As you know this week we're going to be recapping some of the speakers from Meltdown of the Desert this past weekend. This one I'm extremely excited for you to see. It's Jesse Elder and this guy is an absolute legend. He comes out on stage and it's like, you know, I don't really prepare for these type things. I just kind of read the energy of the room and we can go from there. And he asked a couple questions and then just went right into it. There's going to be moments where you're going to freaking laugh hysterically, but there's some really, really important deep moments that I think you'll get uh, a lot from and you'll be in impacted by. Uh, I'm headed to finalize some stuff with Ryan Alford for the GVL Hustle uh, that we have created and are launching this Sunday with our first meetup here in Greenville. Uh, but I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope you get as much from it as I did experiencing it firsthand and uh, I think that you will. Cool teaching kids life skills through the martial arts. You turn that into a multi-million dollar business helping coaches and other people who open martial arts schools make money that he sold at and started over. He started making his videos, which you guys now know as the Mind Vitamins, focusing on helping people elevate themselves by focusing on the here and now. He's gone from about 300 views on each video when he first started to five or six million people a week in less than five years. Yes, it can be done. Yes, he has done it. His mission is to dehypnotize people out of the illusion of linear time to focus on right now. And if you haven't seen any of his Mind Vitamin videos, let's take a look at one right now. I know you have a lot going on. And for the next few minutes, uh, I'll invite you to just let all that take care of itself just for a moment. And consider the fact that everything's actually okay. Just think about it right now, everything's okay. No matter where you find yourself, no matter what kind of stuff is going on in your life, underneath it all, everything's actually all right. You're okay. And you have more power than you might be giving yourself credit for. And if you have something that's going on in your life right now that's challenging or painful, Maybe that's just a reminder to take a little bit better care of yourself because you're worth it. You deserve to take really good care of yourself in whatever way is right for you. Everything's okay. You can breathe deeper relax your body a little bit more you can feel that natural energy it's always available to you everything is okay and you can have this feeling anytime you choose just one thought at a time Please welcome to the Meltdown stage, the time piercer, Jesse Elder. Hello. Yeah. I just yelled. Yeah. There you go. Um, you guys are some marathon oh. attendees. Oh, yeah. What time do you guys get up this morning? Oh, dark. 5.30? Okay, we have 5.30? Four. Four? Three? three. Seven. Uh, Y'all are just back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't slept in five days. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, man, I'm just so happy to be here. And I uh, really appreciate uh, Colton for the invite and for uh, really cool seeing so many friends here. And um, uh, as usual, I have no idea what the hell I'm going to talk about. This is... Um, I was in Romania last week giving a speech to some entrepreneurs and the, uh, the announcer said, uh, Jesse is a spiritual freestyle improv philosopher comedian. And I was like, that sounds great. 
Uh, but here's the deal. If anything good is going to happen in the next uh, 28 minutes and 54 seconds, it ain't because of me. It's because of you. Because you have something that you're choosing to be in that seat for. You don't have to be here. You could be outside. Well, not outside. It's horrible out there. But <laughs> you could choose to not be in this room. You could choose to be uh, taking a nap somewhere, uh, you could choose to be at your home, you, you could choose to be anywhere else on the planet except right here, right now. And so since nobody made that choice for you, since you're the one that chose to be here, um, I'm going to assume that you have a very good reason for doing that. And I don't know what that reason is. And um, especially if, after you've heard from so many great speakers all day today, uh, I feel it would be a little bit irresponsible of me to pretend that I know exactly what you need to hear at this point in the day. Now, if I would have started out, that maybe it would be different, but um, I really am legitimately curious, what, like, why are you sitting in this chair right now? Like, what, what is the reason that's keeping your ass in that seat, aside from some urge to complete the whole day and get some, you know, <laughs> seminar merit badge or something? Like, what is it? Growth, okay. Learning. Learning. Perspective. Energy. Energy. Inspiration. Inspiration. Breakthroughs. Connection. Why not? Why not? So why is not sheep in the house? Experiences. Experiences. To have fun. To have fun, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to the eight-year-old. See you. <laughs> Thank you. That's fine. Okay. Well, okay, so, so let's dig into that. I mean, what, what the hell is growth anyway? Like, what is growth? How do you know if you've achieved growth? How do you know if you've experienced growth? It's a feeling. It's a feeling? You handle things differently. You handle things differently? It's tangible. It's tangible. Ooh, I'm going to sit next to you. Well, right next to you, apparently. <laughs> it is. What's your name? I'm just... Uh, you have very beautiful handwriting. So, tangible. Let's elaborate on this tangible thing. What do you mean tangible? Well, typically if you're growing, it means you started in one point mm -hmm. and ended up somewhere else. So mm -hmm. it doesn't have physically tangible, but mm -hmm. mentally you're in a different space, you're in a different way. If it's a physical change, you weigh so much here, you mm -hmm. weigh so much now, you're stronger. Measure it. If I had a medal to give you, I'd give you Okay, this is, this is actually the part of personal development that excites me, is when you can sort of merge this, uh, you know, blissed out feeling of being so, you know, I'm not all the time. Say fuck, it's okay. Okay, good, I will say fuck later, but <laughs> there it is. Um, it's awesome to take this feeling of alignment and feeling happy and feeling good just because you can. Um, but here's the deal. And I've, I've literally traveled all around the world. I took last year to just put everything in one bag and just take one way tickets every two, three days. Um, because why not? And I met some cool ass spiritual people who have no problem identifying themselves as such. I just thought you should know how cool I am. <laughs> I, you hadn't figured it out. I know I smell like patchouli, that should have ticked you off. <laughs> you can tell by my crystals, that's another clue. <laughs> you can clearly see my guides. Hello. <laughs> <Go. Go. laughs> my chakras are still aligned right now. <laughs> probably your problem. Your chakras aren't just lying. <laughs> you probably have somebody chalk blocking you. <laughs> <laughs> and so I hung out with a lot of cool ass spiritual people who were uh, really happy and really fun to be around. And, uh, and really don't need anything. And they, they clearly don't need anything because they don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> they want to hang out with you, and they want to talk philosophy, and they want to talk about, about you know, the, the, the growth of consciousness on the planet, and they want to talk about how uh, 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 Gaia is waking up, and there's a rebalancing of feminine energy and the collapse of the planet of patriarchy, which I think is happening, but they want to talk about all this stuff, and then at the end of a beautiful conversation, they say, 
yeah, man, I just have reached this amazing state of enlightenment. And um, uh, is it cool if I crash on your couch? <laughs> I'm like, yes, but at the same time, everything you just said, you just lost all this credibility with me because here I am thinking you're like some, you know, cashed out billionaire who now has the luxury of aligning your chakras. But no, you actually have never accomplished very much in this beautiful material world that we live in. But then on the other end, I'm gonna make you work for it today, dude. <laughs> On the other end of the spectrum, you have the heart chargers. You have the hustlers and the grinders. 10x, baby, 10x. No offense to Grant, but Dan Sullivan came up with that term, not Grant Cardone. So, you got the hustle and grind. If you're not hustling, then it means you're not grinding hard enough. And if you're not grinding hard enough, then you obviously aren't a real hustler. And if you're gonna hustle and grind, then you better be ready to hustle and grind. Like no one else is willing to hustle and grind. So one day you live like Canada. I forget the quote, but you know what I'm saying. Do now what no one will do, so someday you can do what no one can do. I can't keep track of what the fuck it means. But these hard charging successinators. I <laughs> literally just came out. <laughs> but these people are so fired up about being successful. And they gotta prove their success. The guys do the ruler that usually is uh, measured in horsepower, square footage, and, and dollars, and revenue, and, and uh, I'm gonna do it too. And yes, I just assumed both genders. Um, but the, the idea of this, I gotta be successful, I am successful, I'm not successful enough. And they make shit tons of money, and they got plenty of cheddar, and they got the toys and the trinkets to prove it, or at least they can rent it for a fee. <laughs> you can rent Lamborghinis. You can rent bookshelves in your garage. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that, no judgment. You can rent women to be in your videos if that's what you want to do. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Call Ty. <laughs> It's true, but the, the idea, the idea is that you can have all the material signs of success and be totally fucking miserable. And so what I've observed is that these two camps, the hustler, the hustle grinders, <laughs> my mission by the end of this talk is to have come up at least 28 new hashtags. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so we got the hustle grinder, the, the, the successinators, and then you have the, the, the you know the, the patchouli unicorn crystal chakra alignment crowd. Full disclosure, I travel with fucking crystals, okay? So just saying, just saying. But the deal is, it's like these two camps are at war with each other. These two groups look at one another with squinty eyes. All the successinators look at the spiritual crowd and they're like, yeah, but they're a bunch of losers. And then all the spiritual crowd look at the successinators and they're, they're, they're miserable because money's the root of all evil. And I've always had friends in both camps. And I've always hung out and enjoyed hanging out with both of those cats. And I've always loved hanging out with these people because they get shit done. And I always love hanging out with these people because they're so fun to hang out with. And you feel so good about yourself when you're hanging out with these high vibe and high frequency elevated humanoids. And you just, it's cool hanging out with both of these camps. But then it began to dawn on me, why don't they get along? Why don't they learn something from each other? Why don't the, the hard charging success grinders, <laughs> hustle grinders, thank you, thank you. Why doesn't this camp Actually, just pay attention. Instead of judging the, the admittedly broke people, but instead of just judging them, saying, you know what, maybe there's something I can learn, and vice versa. And I began to observe in my own experience that I was actually the most happy when I was observing this thing called law of attraction, and I was feeling how I felt and doing what I felt like doing because I felt like doing it, and I don't particularly require any other outside approval or authority or permission outside of my own free will choice. Somebody messaged me the other day, or I left a comment on Facebook, like, Sam Harris doesn't believe in free will. I said, that's his choice. 
I've always been happy when, uh, when I just did the things that made me happy, but then I also observed that that happiness is short-lived without lots of new reasons coming into your life to fuel that happiness. And so I began to observe that, for me personally, the, the, the sweet spot, the zone, the place that I like to live in and reside in, and the place that I call home, energetically, is right in the middle. Right in the middle, in between that feeling of alignment and allowing that feeling of alignment, that feeling of joy, that feeling of happiness, that feeling of, oh, oh man, that feels good. It just feels good to be me right now. And that feeling is only a couple minutes away. Like if you allow yourself to just chill for a second, those feelings will naturally come up, like, a, like, like water bubbling up from a natural spring. You don't have to force it out of the ground, it's trying to come out of the ground. You don't have to force that shit. It's your natural state. Love and alignment and beauty and joy and peace and power is the natural frequency of this universe. And we measure it in this universe as expansion of which you are the leading edge because you're the only thing that we know of that has free will. And you're so free you can choose bondage. You're so free you can choose misery. That's how free we are. So you can choose to justify feeling like shit so that you could fit in with all the other struggle bunnies. <laughs> and then you can have a struggle competition. You know, I've been uh, struggling now for 38 years. <laughs> oh, really? Really? <laughs> Amateur. I've been struggling for 38 lifetimes, motherfucker. <laughs> Spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah? Well, I'm a closet unicorn, I'll have you know. <laughs> and the only reason I've only struggled for 38 years is because I healed all the past childhood traumas of all my past lives. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're free. You're free, you're free, you're free. The past isn't real. Have you ever been there? You ever been to the past? I'll say no. <laughs> when, because when you were there, it wasn't the fucking past. <laughs> oh. Duh. When you were there, it was the present. And then you woke up the next day, and as you were drifting off to sleep, you woke, ah, oh, tomorrow's gonna be a good day. But when you woke up, you didn't wake up and go, ah, oh, it's tomorrow. You wake up, you go, ah, oh, it's today. All you are is just one roving present. Past isn't real, unless you dwell on it and talk about it and shit. Right now. The future's not real either. So at any given moment, including right now, in any given moment, you can choose which thoughts you're gonna pick. You're gonna pick the thoughts that make you feel like shit, hoping that eventually you run out of shitty feelings. Good luck. <laughs> Because there ain't no end to the trend. You can't run out of feelings. You could just feel worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And, worse. and then just when you think you haven't felt bad enough, guess what? You hit the bottom and then you realize that was the top floor. <laughs> and it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. It keeps getting worse. And guess what? It keeps getting worse. As long as you keep posting on it. And then eventually, it's so exhausting to feel like shit that you give up for a second. And you're like, I'm just going to take a nap. Then you take a nap, and you drop all the resistance, and then you wake up, and you go, oh, I feel better. Man, there's something to all this struggling. <laughs> something to all this suffering, you know? I just proved to myself that if I suffer long enough, Misha, I feel good. Therefore, suffering, yeah, not least, suffering must be the key. If you suffer long enough, eventually you feel good. I figured out an algorithm for success. But there's a giant fucking difference between Succeeding after years of struggle, or succeeding because of the struggle. Does that make sense? Somebody says, yeah, you know, I, I, I did this shit for 10 years, and then I made success. Yeah, but what if we could have done it in like 30 days? No, 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 it's not worth it. Who believes in that, man? No one flip that shit on me for a long 
walk that out somewhere else. Because time is the least important factor in having all your dreams come true. Time is the least important factor. And it starts with that feeling. So when you get that feeling, and when you allow yourself to do the things that make you feel like you right now, for no other reason than that you can, since nobody else is thinking your thoughts or feeling your feelings, nobody else is speaking your words, nobody's taking your actions, nobody's doing that shit except for you. That means nobody's creating anything in your experience. You can copy other people's thoughts, other people's words, you can copy other people's feelings, copy other people's actions, but at the end of the day, you know if you're being true to yourself or not. And when you are, all the pressure goes away. All the strain, struggle just dissipates. It's like having your hand on a hot stove. It's like somebody comes along and goes, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Like, oh, well, I'm part of the hot stove club. <laughs> <laughs> well, why are you doing that? Hold on, hold on. Ah! And they're like, why? Why? Your hand, I smell your hand burning. Why is your hand on the hot stove? You're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah! <sighs> I do that because it feels so good when I take my hand off. <laughs> <laughs> so then here's everybody hustling, struggling, and I'm working. <laughs> Dude, why are you making that face? Because I'm focused. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there's supplements for that. I'll <laughs> clear that right up. Who the hell sold us the, the idea that you have to struggle your way to success? The more you struggle, the better you get at struggling. But you gotta, you gotta find your own, your own balance in between that law of attraction. Let that feeling turn into something. Eventually that feeling will, will grow and expand and multiply and that feeling will turn into an idea. And that idea, when it's coming from mm, like that place, like that intuitive, right for you, right now place that only you know about, only you can know if that feeling is right. And when, it's come, when that idea comes from that place, that idea comes with batteries included. And there's no more forcing yourself to do anything. Man, I haven't disciplined myself to do anything since 2011. I decided discipline is a word used to bully people and doing shit they don't want to do. And I thought, I'm gonna opt out of that and see what happens. By the way, I should have said this at the very uh, beginning of, of this talk here. Um, I am not claiming to teach the truth here, or preach the truth, or live the truth. I, I totally stopped caring about the truth a long time ago. Because there's 7.4 billion versions of it. Everybody has their version of what the truth is. And it's cool, enough of us can agree on what's true. But I stopped caring if it's true a long time ago, and I just started asking what's useful. And it didn't seem useful to me to punish myself into prosperity. It didn't seem useful anymore to beat myself up, hoping that one day I can be brilliant enough to justify it. So I started doing more of the things that made me feel like me, which sometimes meant sleeping in until 11 o'clock on a Monday morning. <laughs> if you think you're an entrepreneur and you don't sleep in until 11 o'clock on a Monday, you're not an entrepreneur. <laughs> yes. oh, you're a poser. <laughs> you're an employee. Being held out by the man! Yeah. Says the man. <laughs> So in between the, the thought and then the feeling, then you allow that feeling to grow and eventually the feeling becomes an idea. And then, once that idea pops in, backed by your aligned sense of inspiration or whatever the hell you want to call it, all of a sudden it becomes painful not to take the action. Then and you get all fired up and you get excited, like, oh shit, I'm gonna do this. And then next thing you know, you start marching in that action. And yes, a little old momentum pops in, a little idea pops in, yeah, but what if you don't do it? And you're like, shut up, bitch, and you keep going. <laughs> That's a very advanced spiritual term. 
I'll have you know. And then you tell that voice, shut up, get the fuck out of here. You're old, go away, go to the past, which doesn't exist. <laughs> and then you're like, well, that was successful. And then you just keep taking actions. And then at the end of the hour, or the end of 90 minutes, you stop, stop, you stop. And you look at what you've accomplished, because that's where confidence lives. Confidence only comes from proof. You can't pump yourself up and get confidence. That's bullshit. You can't do that. You only have confidence as a result of measuring the evidence that you've created. So go and do something you never did before. Stop, turn around, and go, damn, that's some progress. And then you feel legitimately good about yourself, which feels natural. It's your natural state, by the way. And then you take another action that feels pretty good. And then you take another action, and pretty soon you've gone farther in two days then you've done it in the last, whatever, two months, two years, two, a long period of time. <laughs> and then pretty soon you're getting bona fide results. You're making things happen, measurable results. Your, your, your body's starting to be and act and feel the way you want it to act and feel. You know what I mean. <laughs> and you're making more money because you're at peace with the money that you've got. Look, no amount of money is going to solve the shitty feeling you have about your money right now. You want to have more money? Fall in love with the money you do have. I was broke three times last year. And I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, this is awesome. Like, when else am I going to get to experience this? This is like, I'm actually broke right now. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. Because then I got all those, those juicy feelings coming up. <sighs> I'm a failure. <laughs> I'm just the elder, how can this happen? <laughs> Shut up, ego. Now is not the time. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized, oh shit, I actually have like a, a couple of euro in my pocket. It's just enough for a cup of coffee. So I go and spend my last two euro on a cup of coffee and I sat down by the marina and I looked at the yachts going by and I felt the sun on my face and the Spanish air in my lungs and the beautiful Spanish yachts floating by. <laughs> and by yachts, I mean boats. <laughs> and man, some of the aft decks on those boats. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sipping my coffee, and within, I don't know, three minutes, I'm totally in a state of legitimate joy and absolute active appreciation of everything that is. And along with the release of that stress and fear and judgment and all of that, <sighs> I realized, wow, if you can make that emotional journey from being stressed out to feeling pretty good, I wonder how much more I can get. And then, so I just allow myself to keep leaning in that direction. Instead of allowing myself to feel pretty good, I thought, like, how good can it get? Let's, let's do a little mission here. So I set the fucking timer on my phone, 90 <laughs> seconds. I'm gonna go for 90 seconds and see how good I can allow myself, not make myself feel. Look, enough of this, this whole thing, like, pump yourself up, pump yourself up, pump yourself up, useful at times. But it also hijacks your body's nervous system. And it creates an imbalance hormonally. And it's, it's actually a seminar trick to addict you to seminars. Because then when you leave the seminar, you get a crash. I don't feel as good. Yeah, because you're not being played like a fucking puppet. It's my opinion. I'm just not right. So the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so the... Um... I cracked myself up on that one. I'm sorry. I, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, so after 90 seconds, I just thought, I'm just going to allow the next thought to come in. And I'm gonna feel for the best next thought. What's another good thing I can think about? Then another one, then another one, another one. And then 90 seconds later, I was like, damn, this feels so good. I'm gonna go again. Boom. Put in another rep. Another 90 seconds of feeling good for no other reason than that you can. And after doing this for about five or six minutes, the ideas started coming. And you don't have access to those ideas when you're stuck in the shit. In fact, trying to reach for the idea that you think is going to save you when you're stuck in the shit just covers your idea in shit. So profound, I know. It's deep. It's deep. Well, it is. It's very deep. 
<laughs> you. So you got to get yourself out of the shit feeling and into the good feeling, and then allow it to keep going. And then the ideas start popping, and next thing you know, I'm thinking of ideas, and then oof, this person pops into my mind. I'm like, oh shit, I totally forgot that they had messaged me about doing some coaching. So I messaged the person, and I said, hey, been on the road, I haven't forgotten about you. Uh, well, yes, I have forgotten about you, but I just remembered you. Um, and I've just been traveling like crazy, but I've got some bandwidth in the next couple of days. Are you still interested in working together? Yes. Great. We message back and forth. Five minutes later, he uh, wires, or, or uh, sends PayPal, 5K, and I was like, cool. Man, that's a lot of cups of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea only comes when you're in that space of alignment. So having that sense of alignment, allowing the feelings to come, which are always there if you let them show up, don't try and force them, just let them come. Then you cross that bridge from the idea and the feeling and then to, into the action, and the action feels good. Then the action feels really good when you take that action, and then you're actually aligning with other forces, perhaps beyond our comprehension, and then you're engaged in the law of traction. Attraction, attraction, and then you're creating results. And there's nothing in your life that you cannot ridiculously, beautifully, radically, powerfully, nothing in your life you can't transform in usually, usually about 20, 21 days. There's nothing you can't change. You don't, you don't have years of history. You have like three weeks of the same history repeated over and over. Stop being so addicted to reality. Reality is an addiction, it's an illusion, and it's a projection of your consciousness. What you're seeing is the remnant of your past manifestational output. What you're observing, what you're feeling, sensing, seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, what this whole thing is the residue of what you were thinking, feeling, and expecting. So change your thoughts, change your feelings, change your expectations, and watch as reality begins to shift and mold itself to match your expectations. And yes, you can chalk it up to coincidence, and you can chalk it up to synchronicity, but you can architect that shit. You can engineer synchronicity, you can architect coincidences at will, and you can allow this universe to provide you with everything that you have the capacity to receive. The hardest part is accepting how easy it really is. Plus, all the seminar people would go out of business immediately. And that's, that's my gig, man. That's what I want to do. I'm, I'm definitely trying to put myself out of business. Like the best thing that would happen would be, I, and I have this in my mind, that I'm going to give a speech one day, and it'll be live streamed, there'll be a billion people. And I'm going to give a speech, and at the end, everybody goes, oh, shit. <laughs> and they cancel their subscription to me and every other fucking guru out there. And all the gurus are like, what happened? <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all the fuckers say you're trying to save people, you're actually addicting people to your ego and your mojo. How about say, you know what? I'm going to be a short-term guru, and I'm going to go in for four years. <laughs> and at the end of my term, y'all don't need me anymore. You don't need me to begin with. That's my, that's my vision. Because it's inside of us, man. It's inside of us. But people either don't know it, so they're not teaching it, or they know it, and they're not teaching it to you shittier. But your reality isn't that real. Stop taking this so seriously. Your body is a reflection of your thoughts and your feelings. I've had so many injured, man. I've had my shoulder torn. I've had my collapsed lung, knees blown out, ankle, concussion, nose like this, fingers broken. And every single time, I just let the body do what it needed to do. Pa -pa 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 -pa. <laughs> Ready to go again. Like Wolverine, man. <laughs> it's great. It's so great. Our bodies are the reflection of our consciousness. Elevate uh, your consciousness. Elevate your, your frequency. Elevate your body. And the way you do this is stop trying so hard. There's nowhere else to get to. You're here. You're here. You're here right now. And right now is enough. Right now is plenty. And you're like, yeah, but you should be thought. As they stop thinking that thought and come back to this. Don't judge yourself, you love yourself. Endlessly, shamelessly. And as that capacity for self-love increases, you start to shine a little brighter, and pretty soon people start coming up to you, they're like, what are you on? And you'll be like, another level. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>